Hello everybody, bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for tuning in to Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. So, a couple of months ago, I bought a pair of speakers. Uh, they were active speakers. I was really excited to, to put them in my system and listen to them. Uh, they had a frequency response from 50 to 20 kilohertz. Uh, that was a minus 5 dB point. Uh, they had a 150 watt amplifier for the bass, a 50 watt amplifier for the treble, with an active crossover, uh, balanced inputs, it was a 15 inch paper cone woofer in a ported box uh, with an inch and a quarter uh, compression driver and a nice big waveguide. The horizontal dispersion was 80 degrees, so flat across the 80 degrees uh, horizontally and 50, uh, 55 degrees uh, vertical uh, dispersion. Do you have any idea what they sound like? I bet you don't. That's because the measurements can't really tell you what it sounds like. I have another pair of speakers here. They're, they're passive speakers. They measure from, I uh, read a review of them recently, um, and they go from 65 to 20 kilohertz, uh, plus or minus 2 dB, uh, 91 dB efficiency. Uh, again, a paper cone woofer, one inch uh, poly tweeter, and um, they sound completely different. Measurements are, I mean, they're passive and, and active, so can't really compare but you can't really tell anything from the specs that I mention doesn't tell you anything what they sound like and and that's with speakers you know speakers. the measurements across speakers they, they vary you know wildly I mean, great gaps in, in frequency response numbers and, and distortion and efficiency uh, but you take something like uh, DAX and amps you measure those um, differences are measured in, in tenths of a DB and you know hundreds and thousands of a percent in, in a distortion um, and when you measure DAX and amps you know it, it'll tell you something but it's not really going to tell you how it sounds and and here's the thing um, there are people who say that measurements are very important and something that you can use to choose components um, but I would argue that you know you can read the measurements of components and it's really going to tell you nothing about how it sounds. Um, uh, here, here's where, where I take issue with uh, someone like uh, Amir at uh, Audio Science Review. Um, you know, he'll have reviews of things and he'll recommend or not recommend, but mostly based on uh, the measurements. You know, he takes a component and he puts it in his audio analyzer and, and he takes all detailed measurements and he gives you really detailed information about the function and, and uh, all, all the, the parameters, all the electrical and, and uh, mechanical parameters of it. But you reading those reviews, you really have no idea what the component actually sounds like. And so to recommend or not recommend something based on that um, is, I think, it really steps over a boundary um, because it, it doesn't really do any use not recommending something based on its measurements alone because uh, you really can't tell how it sounds like and you know audio science review is not the only one or even the first one to do it I mean back in the day I used to read a stereo review and there was a writer uh, Julian Hirsch and he would do the things uh, they're actually called test reports not reviews which, which is more uh, a more realistic uh, naming of what they were doing um, and they would do detailed test reports um, distortion measurements, power measurements, and you know all of the measurements that, that were applicable. Um, and the same thing at the end, they would do a, a cursory listen, and they would say this component uh, measures well enough that uh, you know any differences between it and other top components would be inaudible um, without actually listening to it and telling you what it would sound like. Um, so it was very informative these test reports, but after reading them, you had no idea what the component sounded like. And, and I guess if you're coming from a point where um, if there are no audible, if there are presumably no audible differences because of the measurements, then the two things should sound the same and, you know, there's no point in, in talking about it. Um, uh, you know, if you have something that has a, a dynamic range, you know, something that's not recommended because the synad or the signal to noise and distortion is only 90 dB down. Um, you know, I listen to music at night in the basement here. Uh, people, you know, it's midnight, one o'clock in the morning. 
and people are sleeping two floors above me and so I can listen about 70 dB you know that, that's good for me um, with the speakers and the amps I have I have no tone controls uh, lift sending at 70 dB I can get full sound deep bass um, nice sound stage I hear details um, if I have signal to noise and, and distortion that's 80 dB down say you know for a really horribly measuring component um, the noise floor of my room is 28 to 30 dB you know you hear some some traffic or some trains in the background or something uh, and I'm listening at 70 dB kind of peaks um, you know if the noise and distortion is 80 dB down measured uh, what is that going to be like 40 dB below the noise floor of my room you know how is any of this going to be audible in terms of measurements I mean it should be you know if you don't recommend something because its noise floor is 80 dB down it's nothing I'm ever gonna hear so it's useless to not recommend a component based on that um, if you want to recommend a component you listen to it and you say what it sounds like and then you can you can recommend it I mean I bring components in my system to play music through them and to enjoy the music um, you know, people don't bring components home to measure and then look at the, the numbers on the graph and decide if they if it's good or not. So if you can't use measurements to decide if a component's good or not, how, how are you supposed to do it? Well, the, the gold standard, the, the very top way to judge whether a component is good or not is to bring it home, set it up in your system, and listen to it. Spend it at a time, play some music through it, decide if you like it or if you don't. And that's all that matters. In the end, ultimately, you buy your stuff, you live with it. Okay, some people like the looks more than others. Some people like the way things feel. For me, yeah, it's got to look nice. Uh, you know, I have a bunch of different looking components here. And uh, um, I, I, I like the way they all look. But ultimately, each one sounds good. And I put it in my system and I like it. So... You buy something, you put it in your system, and you decide if you like it. Fortunately, uh, retailers and, and online sellers are, are good at these days at uh, allowing you to, to have that, that either return period or you know borrowing and, and lending components. Um, if you can't get something in your own system, second, you can read reviews. If you read reviews in a, in a magazine, okay, we know magazines are often biased. You, you open a magazine, there's a nice big uh, shiny ad for components on the inside cover pretty much you know there's going to be a favorable review of that component further on in the magazine but you know that, that that's the business model that it, it makes sense you know you, you can't piss off your advertisers by by saying their, their stuff doesn't sound good once they advertise with you um, but often if you read between the lines in the reviews you get a good sense especially with the good writers you get a good sense of what the component sounds like and you know whether or not they, they gush over it or not reading it and, and reading you know reading the same writers over and over again will, will give you a good idea of, of what sounds good and, and especially if you have experience with a component that they have reviewed you can listen to it and say okay I understand what they're saying about when they when they're talking about the sound of a component and you can use that to judge same thing with online reviews um, you watch a video of someone reviewing something and you know in them describing it gives you a sense of what the component does and you know with a bit of reflection you can see oh maybe that'll good work good for me or maybe this is the the type of component i need this is the type of music i listen to these are the qualities that i value that i prioritize in my system um, and then certainly if you have an experience with something that you saw online reviews for if the person liked it and you like it, you know, maybe your priorities and your, your preferences will align with that reviewer. So, you know, take it in good faith that they're, uh, they're saying good things about stuff that you would also like. Um, likewise, say, I review a DAC and I like it and then you buy it and you don't like it. Still, my reviews might be informative that if I like something, maybe you won't. Just Just putting that out there. The second way to, to review things, to evaluate things and decide if they're, if they're good for you or not. Um, for people who really need a useful measurement, 
um, and, and a specification to, to judge on uh, a certain metric that's really going to tell you if something's good or not. Um, I, I've come up with a with something. It's called the um, SAW score. Uh, so the SAW score here here's how it works. Um, you get a component, you put it in your system, you start listening to stuff, and it's like, wow, that sounds great. And you're listening to music, and, uh, and you're like, oh, okay, let me let me grab this record. And you put that on. And you listen to it and you're like, oh, wow, this is fantastic. I never heard that before. Uh, and then you grab a CD and you put something else in. And you're like, oh, this is fantastic. I love it. Oh, wow, wow. I never heard that before. This is great. Whoa. You hear the sound stage. You hear the separation. Wow. Listen to the timbre of that instrument. You know, you're, you're really tripping over the sound of something. And you listen to another thing and another thing. And then all of a sudden you realize it's 3 a.m. on a Tuesday night. you got to work tomorrow morning. So you pack it up. You go to bed, you wake up two hours later and you get ready and you go to work. Next day at work, you're at work and, and your your colleague comes up and says, Hey, Dave, you, you look really tired. You know? you're like, yeah, well, I, I was up late last night listening to music. And, you know, and then another colleague uh, you know, in the lunchroom comments and says, Hey, Dave, you, you look really tired. I said, yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, just up, up late last night. And then and in, in the meeting, you, your boss is like, You okay? You falling asleep there? And you're like... Well, no, I, I was just uh, didn't sleep much last night. And so you go through your day and you have three colleagues who commented that you were sleepy at work. So the SAW score is uh, how many people tell you you're sleepy at work. And say an SAW of three, you know that component is good. You know, you put in a good component, you got an SAW of three, that thing's probably staying in your system. You put something on, you listen to it a bit, you shut it down, you go to bed early. That's not for you. That's an SAW of zero. Uh, so that's my metric. And so anyway, that's a couple of my thoughts on, on measurements and subjective listening. Um, I hope you found it valuable. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. Please leave it in the comments. Um, I read all the comments and I'll, I'll reply to pretty much most of them anyway. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, next weekend, I'm going to the Toronto Audio Fest. Uh, I'll be doing some, I'll be recording some videos, and I'll do a little compilation of what I saw and what I liked, and maybe what I didn't like. Um, so if you happen to see me there, come say hi. I'd love to, to meet all, any and all of you. Um, just wanted to uh, show this album, Bruce Coburn. Uh, Dancing in the Dragon's Jaws. I really like listening to this. I like um, listening to new components uh, with this record. Uh, it's nicely recorded. Um, has some nice deep bass. Has some nice ambiance. I mean, you can you can hear the the recording venue in, in the studio, and and I like I like the music. It's really engaging, and it's just such a fun album to listen to. Um, just the, the dynamics and and the music. It's so catchy and. Um, so if you haven't listened to it, check this one out. It's one of the ones that I really enjoy. Thanks again for watching. Dave listened to Hi-Fi. See you next time.